This video is sponsored by Altium. Hello friends, welcome to the fourth module of this video course. In this module, we will have an overview of the training process. The training process begins with data set processing, where we will load the data set and split it into training, validation, and testing data sets. After this, we will go to the data augmentation step, where we apply various transformations to the training data set and increase the number of training samples. Now we will have two data sets first, the original data set, and second, the augmented data set. In the next step, we will begin the training of the unit architecture on both the original data set and the augmented data set. This way, we will have two different models. After this, we will compare the training process of both models and see which one of them is performing better. We know that we need good hardware to train a deep neural network, especially a GPU. Hence, in the final step, we will learn how to train the unit architecture using a Google Collab, as not everyone has access to good hardware, so Google Collab would be a good option. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility ease of use and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. We are going to discuss data processing. And here we have four steps. Our first step is the data set itself, which should contain RGB images and the respective binary mask. Let's have a look at the data set itself. Here we have our human face segmentation data set containing two folders. The first one includes images, and the second one contains the mask. Each folder contains 100 images. Here you can have a look at the RGB images. Inside the mask, we can see that there are 100 binary masks. We should have the images and mask with us for the first step. In the second step, we are going to load this data set. And in the third step, we will split this data set into three different sets, training, validation, and testing. And at last, we are going to save these three data sets into three separate folders. We are going to use these for training our architecture. Now let's look at the practical demonstration of how we will perform this data processing. First of all, Let's import all the libraries and functionality we require. Our first library is the OS. We will use the operating system library to ensure there is no OS dependency, and we will try to reduce the OS dependency. We are going to use this while along the paths. Our second library is the NumPy. We are going to use NumPy to perform mathematical operations on that arrays. The third is CV2. We refer to this library as OpenCV, and we use it to read, resize, and write images. Our fourth library is the glob. We're going to use the glob function to extract specific file patterns. Then our second and last library is the tqdm. tqdm is a progress bar that we use on our loop to see how many iterations are done and how many iterations are left. It also shows how much time the iteration or the entire loop would be completed. And our last function is the train test split. We use this function to split the data set into training, validation, and training testing. Now our first task is loading the data set. Let's begin with this function. We're going to define a name for the function called loadDataset. It takes one parameter, which is the path. Here, our path will be the name of this folder, human face segmentation. And inside it, it contains the images folder and the mask folder. Now let us extract the images first. So we will say images. Then we'll use the glob function. Inside it, we will give it the path. For the path, we're using the operating system library. Hence, we're going to use os.path.join. Inside it, we need to give the main path first. Then we need to load images. So we're going to write images. Inside the images folder, we want to extract all the images. So we will write star. Now this is how we're going to load our masks. Same function glob, then our path. 
then we have the full name of the mask folder, and then star. This way, it will extract images and masks. Both images and masks are lists that contain the path. Since these are lists, so we can sort them. Now we are going to return both images and the mask. Let's execute both these cells. Finally, our data loading function is done. Now let's execute this function. First of all, we need the path, and our path is human face segmentation. In the following line, we will extract both images and masks from this path using a load dataset function. In the load dataset, we will give this path the dataset path. We have our images and masks, and we know these are lists. Let us print the lengths of those lists to check how many images and how many masks we have. Let us execute this cell. Here we have 100 images and the respective 100 masks. We are sure that both the images and masks are equal, which is good. We need to make sure that the first image in this list should be the same as the first masks in this list, so their names should be the same because, in our dataset, both images and the respective masks have the same name. This is how we make a pair. Let's check the name from this list. We're going to type for x, y in zip, and inside the zip, we can give the name of both these images and masks. So, this is a loop, and now we will print x and y. This is done. Now you can see the name. This is the path for the image, and this is the path for the mask. As you see, their name is the same. 1 point PNG for the images, and 1 point PNG for the masks. Second, 10 point PNG for the images, and 10 point PNG for the masks. We have the same pair of images and masks, so this type is done correctly. This is just a check. If there's an error, the model will not learn correctly, and its performance will drop. Let's have a look at those images and masks. We will use a tool called I'm show tools, and from this tool, we will use the function I'm show. Here we will initialize an empty list called cat. It will store some data, and then we will loop over those images and masks. Let's copy this one from here. And this is done. Now we want to show six images. We don't want to show all those images. There are only six samples. Let's read the images first. Here we type X, and we will read it as an RGB image. And we have read it as RGB. In the same way, we will also read the masks as RGB, and we won't read them as grayscale. We are going to change the path here. We have read both images and masks. Now we are going to concatenate them. For the concatenation, they need to have the same channels. That's why we have read both the image and mask as RGB. To concatenate, we can type np.concatenate. And inside, we're going to give it a list. And the list will contain both X and Y, which are the arrays of images and the masks. Here, we need to define the axis, and the axis is 1. Now we type append parentheses Z parentheses. The concatenated data into cat. The Z contains your image and mask information. Now we're going to use the I'm show function from here to look at how those images and masks look. Inside I'm show, you will get all the information inside the cat. Then there is the size. For the size, we use 20 by 10. After that, it has one more option, which is columns. We want three columns because we have six images. So there will be two rows. Let's execute this functionality. Here we have two columns, each containing three sets of images and their masks. If you look at this image, it's not looking correctly because it's a BGR image. We can see the blackish tone first, so let's convert this BGR image into RGB. We can say x equals cv2 dot cvt color. And here, the input image, we will say x cv2 dot color underscore BGR to RGB. Let's execute it again. So this time, we can see the images in RGB format. Here you can see the image and mask pair of these images. Your first step is done, the data set loading. Now our second step is to split the data set. Let's create a function called split data set. Within this function, we're going to give it images, then masks. So images and masks are the lists that contain images and mask paths. Then there's a split variable, which will hold a floating point value. It will have 0.2 because we will split our data set into three categories training, validation, and testing. The training would contain maximum data, validation, testing, and good content would contain a small set of data. Hence, we'll provide 20% of the data for validation, 20% for testing, and the remaining 60% for training. That's why I've set 0.2 here, and you can convert it to 0.1 or 0.3. It's up to you. But for this task, I'm going to use 0.2 for the split value. 
First, we will calculate how much 20% of images would be, so that we will say split size. So we will type integer, because of the split size, the number of images would be an integer. And it cannot be a float number. You cannot have 0.5 images. You will have either one or two images. We will say the length of images into split. This way, we know what the size of the split is. We're going to split those images per mask into training and validation first. And we're going to say train underscore x, then train underscore y. Here we denote the training, x denotes the images, and y denotes the mask. This is the sequence I'm going to follow for an entire set. Now we're going to use this train test functionality, which we have imported at the start of this video. Here we're going to give it images first. Okay, there's a mistake here. Instead of train y, I need to write valid x. That's my mistake. We're going to divide the image into two sets, training and validation. After images, we need to give a test size. We have already calculated the test size, which is split size 20% of 100 would be 20 images. In the validation, it will contain 20 images, and the remaining images will be a training set. We type random state. When using this function, always make sure that you have a random state value set. Please do not leave it. Otherwise, you will have some issues. Same way, we're going to split the mask. Instead of train x, we're going to say train y. And instead of valid x, we're going to say valid y. And here, instead of images, we're going to say masks. Just that. And here we have the images and mask pair. Make sure that both of them have the same random state. Please don't change the random state and give one value to every function you want to use. We have assigned 80% of the data to training x and y, and the rest of the 80% for valid x and y. Now we will again use this train x and y and extract 20% more data for the testing set. For that, I'm going to copy the code, which is basically the same. Here we have taken the train test split function, and we have train x, the same split size, and the same random state. This way, we have split the data set into training and testing again. 80% of the data is in training now. We have given 20% to testing from the 80%, so it remains 60%. We will have 60 images in training, 20 in the validation, and 20 in the testing. Let's now return this data set. Now you're going to execute this function. Let's go to the execution part of this code. Here we are going to have our data set split part. We're going to call our function split data set, and inside it, we need to give images, masks, and split. By default, it is 0.2. You can give this one or give some other value. We're going to execute it. Now I will print the length of each of those images and masks from all three sets that are training, validation, and tests. Let's execute it. Initially, we knew that we had 100 images and masks, and we have now split it into training, validation, and testing. For the training, we have 60 images. For the validation, we have 20 images, and, and 20 images for testing. In total, there are 100 images and 100 masks. The second step is also completed. We have properly split the data set. Since we have split the data set, now, in the third step, we will save it, and to save, we need to create some folders. Let's work on that. We're going to write a function that will automatically create a folder. We're going to say def create dir. Here, we need to give it a path. Here, we're going to use our OS library, and we're going to say if not OS dot path exists. If this path does not exist, we will say make the folder structure. If this path does not exist, make this folder and execute it. There's a spelling mistake. Let's execute it again. This part is done. Now we are going to create all the folders. Let's try to do this. Our main folder is dataset. And inside dataset, we're going to have another folder called non-aug, because we haven't applied data augmentation to this dataset. So it is the original set. We're going to say dear os.path.join, and we're going to say dataset. It is the main folder. Inside it, we're going to have non-aug. We also have three sets that are train, valid, and test. Let's create three more folders. We will have a loop we say for item in a list, and the list would contain train, valid, and test. This item will contain train, valid, and test, and inside each train, valid, and test, it would contain images and masks. Our path is os.path.join. It would be saved there. That is main path dataset slash non aug. After that, it would be an item whether it's the train, valid, or test. And after that, it will have images. We're going to put a function here, create dare. This way, we will create a folder. I'm going to copy this and replace the word of the images with the masks. We will have all the folders built inside our file explorer. 
it is executed. Now let's open the file explorer. We can see it as a dataset folder. Inside it, there is one more folder called non-aug, then three folders, which are test trained and valid, and inside each, you can see the images and masks folder. So this is our structure, and this is how we'll save the dataset. Now let's write the function to save the dataset. It will be a simple function. First, we will name the function, which is save dataset. We will give it images, masks, and the directory where we need to save our dataset, images and masks. Now, we are going to loop over our images and masks. Then we will use our progress bar, the TQDM. Inside it, we'll say zip, images, and masks. We also need to have a variable called total, the number of iterations. The number of iterations will be the length of images and masks. These X and Y are basically the paths. If we remember the path from here, we need to extract this one point PNG here. This is another functionality that we need to work on. Let's see how to extract this one dot PNG from this variable. First, I will copy this and we will have one more cell here. We will have a variable called S and this is its value and we will execute it. Now let's insert one more set. We need to extract one dot PNG from the S variable. We can split the string and we can say name equals S dot split. We have slashes here, and we're going to use them because when we put them, they will be split into this part, images, and then this name with the extension. If you're using Windows, these slashes will be different, so use your slash accordingly. Now I will put the slash, and then I say print the name. Let's see the URL to get a list. The last item on this list will be 1.png. Let's say we increase the list, and the path is different. Let's add something and execute it. Even if the path is longer, your last item is still your name we can say minus one here. This way, you will always have your name here. This is how we will work with this part. This way, we have the X and Y, and we need to extract the name from here. We're going to say name equals to X dot split, simple slash, and then minus one. This way, we have our name. Now we're going to read both the images and masks. So we're going to say X equals CV2 dot I'm red, comma X CV2 I'm red underscore color. We're going to read the images RGB, same functionality just changing the path. Instead of X, it will be Y, and we have read both images and masks. We need to save them, so we need to have some path. Now we're going to say os.path.join. We have our saved there, and inside it, we're going to have an images folder. Images will be saved inside the images folder, and we will have a name. Then say save mass path. As before, os.path.join. Save there, mask the name. We have the path for both images and masks. Then, we need to save them and write them back to the disk, so we're going to say cv2.imwrite. First and foremost, it will take the path. Thus, we will save the image, which will be in the X. Then, we will save the mask, which is in the Y. This function is done. Let's execute the cell. Let's go back to our execution part, saving the training set, and let's use our function called saveDataset. We're going to give it train X, which is the training of the images, train Y, then path. Our path will be save dare. Save dare is a dataset slash non aug, and then train. Let's execute this. As we see, this part is done. Now let's go back to our folder, dataset, non aug, and train. We should have 60 items. We can see there are 60 items, which means it contains 60 images. Also, the same thing with the masks. It should also contain 60 items. We will use these images and masks for training our model. We can also do the same for the validation and our test part. Let's copy the code from here. We can change the value to valid x and valid y for the validation. Instead of the train, we will say valid and execute this. It would have 20 images. So let's see if that folder contains 20 images, which is validation. Yes, it contains 20 images. We can do this for the test as well. Just replace the variable's name and change the images and path. Let's execute this. The test part is also finished. Now we have our test side inside the test folder. This is how you will load the dataset. You'll load the dataset first, then split it. Finally, you'll save it. We have the saved dataset in our folders. We can check them and verify them, and we'll use this dataset to train our model. That's all for now. In the next video, we're going to apply data augmentation.